Light Insight Instrument Ground School has hundreds of practice test questions based on the FAA knowledge exam, and after thousands of completed tests from our students, we've got a great deal of data on what the big trouble areas are. We've identified four of the hardest IFR test questions. Let's go through them in depth. When you enroll in Instrument Ground School, you'll be able to drill on these and hundreds more questions with instant feedback on both correct and incorrect answers. Number one, when is radar service terminated during a visual approach? A, automatically when ATC instructs the pilot to contact the tower. B, immediately upon acceptance of the approach by the pilot. Or C, when ATC advises radar service terminated, resume on navigation. Radar services is what ATC provides us when they've identified us on their radar screen and are able to accept traffic separation for our flight. The question gets to when these services end, and so when we become responsible for our own traffic avoidance. The aim defines a visual approach as a type of instrument procedure conducted in visual meteorological conditions. It requires the aircraft to remain clear of clouds, have the airport or preceding aircraft in sight, and have a reported weather at the destination airport better than a thousand foot ceilings and three miles of visibility. Most people choose C for this, which makes sense as it actually has the phrase radar service terminated in it. This is something ATC will say to you, but resume on navigation is what you would hear if you were on the en route phase of the flight still, like if you had been assigned a radar vector previously, and then ATC is telling you to resume flying your cleared route again. The approach or center controller clearing you for a visual approach is still working a flow of aircraft into the airport. And so even though you have the field in sight, they remain responsible for traffic separation. The AIM instructs that radar services end when handed off to the tower or told to change to advisory frequency. This is answer choice A here. Number two, refer to figure 188. You've been cleared to creek via the BTG 054 degree feeder route at 7,000 feet. Approaching creek, you're cleared for the LOC DME runway 21 approach into PDX. Descent to procedure turn altitude may begin only once you have A. Completed the procedure turn and established on the localizer, B. Reached creek, or C. Read back the approach clearance. We've done several videos on procedure turns and what it means to be established, and they're explained in depth in the ground school lectures. Here's the approach plate referenced in the question. Creek is the initial approach fix, and we're flying to it along the feeder route from the battleground VOR at 7,000 feet. The minimum altitude for this segment is 5,700 feet, but this only applies when we're actually cleared for the approach. Until then, our last assigned altitude of 7,000 still applies. Most people answer B, that the descent can only begin once reaching creek. This might be true if we were on a radar vector, in other words, we weren't on a published segment of the approach like this feeder route with a minimum altitude. A is also too late. Once we begin the procedure turn, regardless of how we arrived into it, we should be in our descent down to the procedure turn altitude of 5,700 feet. The only other choice is C, when we've read back the approach clearance. Our approach clearance and subsequent readback authorizes us to fly all the published altitudes on the plate. Since we're on the feeder route and the minimum altitude for the segment is 5,700, we're good to descend right away. Number three, to ensure proper airspace protection while in a holding pattern above 14,000 feet in a propeller-driven airplane, what is the maximum indicated airspeed a pilot should use? Now, when most of us get our instrument rating, we're not used to doing much, if any, flying at 14,000 feet and above, and our aircraft aren't fast enough for these speed restrictions to be relevant, so it makes sense that this is a less well-known topic on the test. This table right here in the AIM from 5-3-8 is what we need to know. In the low altitudes, up to 6,000 feet, we should fly 200 knots or slower. Above 6,000 up to 14,000, it's 230 knots. And above 14,000, it's 265 knots. All these speeds are in knots indicated airspeed. These could be adjusted on a chart or by ATC, but these are the standard holding airspeeds. Besides committing these speeds and altitudes to memory, you might have been able to guess at this question by remembering that below 10,000 feet, we're generally restricted to 250 knots or slower, and above that the restriction goes away. So out of the answer choices, the one that's higher than 250, which we'd be allowed to do above 10,000 feet, is choice A, 265 knots. Final question. A cruise 4,000 feet clearance would mean that the pilot is authorized to A, vacate 4,000 feet without notifying ATC, B, climb to but not descend from 4,000 feet without further ATC clearance, C, 
Use any altitude from minimum IFR to 4,000 feet, but must report leaving altitude. A cruise clearance is spelled out in 443D3 of the AIM. It assigns a block of airspace from the minimum IFR altitude up to and including the specified altitude, in this case 4,000 feet. You can level off anywhere in this block, and climbs and descents can be made at your discretion. Once you start a descent and report leaving the altitude, you can't then return to that altitude again. Cruise clearances are great if we're encountering turbulence, for example, and aren't sure we can hold altitude very precisely, or if we're concerned with icing or other weather and want to stay flexible in changing altitudes. Altitude changes aren't required to be reported as we exercise this flexibility. This is why answer choice C is wrong, although everything else with it is correct. A is correct. We can leave 4,000 without letting ATC know. Once we do report it, though, that higher altitude is closed to us without getting a new instruction. So those are four of the most wanted questions from the IFR knowledge test. Keep taking those practice exams on our ground schools and read the answer feedback carefully. We provide feedback for both why the right answer is correct and why the other ones are incorrect. And we're refining our test prep resources every day. Check out all our courses on our website linked here or in the description.